Hello and welcome to RTC TV. My name is Jared Michael and we are in Western getting ready for an exciting evening of high school football. It is August 26th and tonight's matchup is between the Western Panthers and the Tipkin Valley Vikings. Valley had a rough showing last Friday with a defeat to the Culver Academy Eagles. They had some key players injured and we are looking to see how this is going to affect them. Looking to turn their fates around uh, as they head into their second non-conference game, Valley is now ranked 257th in the state. Western Panthers come into their second non-conference game ranked 211th in the state. They lost their first game to the Frankfurt against the Frankfurt Hot Dogs, 12 to 6. Panthers were facing Culver later in the year and will be looking at Valley to gauge the competition they will be facing. Both teams are looking for their first victory tonight, this being the second time the teams have faced off. Western is looking for another win and Valley is looking to turn the streak in their favor. For offense, we have number five, Alec Craig, fullback uh, at quarterback for fullback 15, Wes Melanson. Z position, Z, uh, number seven, Chris Seacrest at the X. Number 13, Jared Duesenberry, tight end, 40, Bryce Webster. Slot, number 12, DJ Heckman. Tackles, 60, Will Hossenplug, 72, Michael Pasika. Guards, 52, Jonathan Daly, uh, 77, Evander Wimsat. Center, 74, Hunter Hyden. For uh, offense on the Western is quarterback number three, Tyler Nepley. Right receivers, Micah Beard, Nick Halford. Running back, Kill, Kitchell Gifford, Richie Heaton. Uh, tight end, Andy Ashburn. Uh, tackles, Tyler Gilbert, Braxton Erb. Gilbert Bowen at guards, and Lane Urbick, Grant Harlan. They're about ready to get everything started here as we prepare for kickoff. Noah. And there's the kick. That's number 12, DJ Heckman getting the ball. Now DJ is taking over for last week, number 24, Shane Ellis, who was injured on the first kickoff of the game. Uh, Shane is going to get his MRI this week, and hopefully that'll end up good, so that way he can get back out on the field. It's a nice and rainy Friday at Western. A little bit away from Kokomo where we had some major storm damage. Uh, we got to drive down through that on the way down here. Alec Craig is back ready to take the snap. And that's Heckman with the ball. And Heckman is taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Craig is back for the pass. Tosses the 13 Duesenberry. Now with this wet, wet, wet Friday. Uh, that ball is going to be very slippery, and I'm looking for a lot of turnovers this game. Valley's looking for their third down here, try to convert this into a first down. He's back for the pass, reeling, and just a quick little dump pass to the fullback, Wes Melanson. And out comes the specialty teams. Number 13, Jared Duesenberry is back to punt. In the last game, Jared had a pretty good punting game uh, with a couple of bad snaps, but however he's doing good, has great height on the ball. And that's a fair catch to number five, Nick Hackler. He's a junior for Western this year. Thank you. 
did in the track. So, no, it's Western. Western had a lot of opportunities last week, but just came up short. And then they had a very experienced quarterback, Tyler Nepley, set it up. That's number 21, Kitchell Gifford, on the run. It appears that they have a very strong running game and that they're going to be focusing a lot on running in this rain. Pass to number two, Micah Beard. Western's coming out looking strong and uh, athletic, ready to push this ball down the valley's throat. The Vikings have had a hard time in history coming out flat. Oh. Whistle down on the play. That'll be a false start on the offense. And that's a keep by Number three, Tyler Nepley. And that's going to bring Western into the red zone. I'm going to be moving back and forth. That'll be a pass to number two again. And that'll be a touchdown for Western. I can't get a good view. Western's coming out for the PAT. Looks like there was no shift and the two point conversion is good. Western is fired up. Uh, their coach is doing a great job keeping this momentum going. Hopefully Valley can get this turned around. Back to kick is number 47, Andrew Freeman. He's a sophomore this year for Western, and he has a pretty good leg so far. Receiving for Valley is Heckman. That'll be number 28, Jaden Conley on the receiving. And he gets down to about the 45. That is the best return for Valley of this season. And that's a great way to bring back some momentum to the Valley side. Let's see if we can go better than a four and out here. Valley well, is looking to respond to that score. Quarterback out, Craig under center. We haven't seen that so far this year. It appears that 
the wet ball is getting to Valley and they're trying to mix things up a little bit. Al rolling out. Quick pass to number 40, the tight end, Bryce Webster. Pass is incomplete. Bryce had a couple of great passes last game. Uh, majorly pulling through, his size is a great advantage to most high school players. Not only to build off the field, great field position the special teams gave them, but to give that defense time to strategize how to stop the middle attack. Seacrest, Newsom, 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 Bryce is a junior this year, and he's been in the weight room on the offseason trying to get bigger, faster, and stronger in order to help move after contact and able to keep going off the ball, and it appears that that's working out for him. Clock runs with 8.30 to go in this first quarter. 8 nothing Western, but Valley now, first down and 10 at the Western 28. Huge will get the handle now. Huge will get the handle. 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 Huge will get Craig with the keep and brought down, bringing up third down. Vikings need to keep their momentum going if they're hoping to score on this drive. Third and 16, 16. Valley's not had a very good running game so far. So Alex looking for the pass. That's a toss to Jonathan, John Humes. And they're counting that as a complete pass. Which will bring up first down. That was a great catch by a sophomore, John Humes. He had a pretty good showing in last week's game. This puts Valley in the red zone. And that is Valley's first touchdown of the season. To a wide open number 30, John Humes. This will be the first time Valley's PA team is out. Yeah. 
Kick on the way by Santiago. Looks good. And and that means that the PAT is good. This will be just the second time that Santiago has kicked off this year. That's a short kick by Santiago. He's giving Western great field position, just short of the 50. Not some sportsmanship by number 50, Josh Hazard. Help buttoning up the Western player. Valley is lining up far off the ball. You gotta wonder just how aggressive they're gonna come off here. And it looks like he could go all the way. That's another score for Western. Bringing it 14 to seven. PAT team is out for Western. With a great two-point conversion the last time they were down here, you got to wonder if they're going to go for it again or if they're going to kick. <laughs> Looks like they're going for it. Three's back to pass. And the two-point conversion is good. With 5.59 left to go in the first quarter, it is now 16-7 Western. We have a whole bunch of little cheerleaders down on the sideline doing push-ups in order to help celebrate the score of Western. The Western cheerleaders are helped out by these small little buddies in order to help raise money for cheer. And Western breaks to kick off. That last drive was a one play drive and Valley's hoping to repeat the process here. Squid kick. That's going to give the Vikings close to the same field position that they gave Western last time. This is Vikings third time having the ball. And that's a fumble. And 
and Western recovers the fumble. It was a simple miscommunication by Valley, made all worse all the made all the worse by the bad weather. Quick screen to number five, Mike Hackler. And that's another one play drive for Western. Western has clearly come out here to play this evening, and Valley just looks a little flat compared to their intensity. Let's see if Tiffany Valley can stop the two point conversion. This time, Western will shift. Western shifts. And this is the first time Western's attempting an actual kick. And the kick is good. That'll bring the score to 23 to seven with 538 left to play in the first quarter. There's going to be a lightning delay now. Uh, We'll be a quick break and we'll be right back. And we're coming back from a storm delay. There was major lightning on the uh, field. I'm Jared Michael for RTC TV, and this is Valley at Western. We're getting ready to resume the first quarter. Western is currently winning at 23 to seven. And there's 20 seconds now before they resume play. Valley came out of the locker room looking a little flat, and Western came off firing. Came off firing all guns. They are ready to go. They are ready to finish this game. It is a late night right now at 9.01 with the first quarter. So Valley's got a long drive home. Hopefully they can make that drive nice with a good win here. 5.38 left on the clock. Western seems hyped up. Valley looks like they're ready to play too. Western kicking off. If you'll remember, they did just score before the lightning breaks. And another onside kick. And that'll be number 25, Isaac Lau, getting the ball. Craig is back in the pistol formation. And that's a great pass to Bryce Webster. So far this game, he has been an amazing receiver. Uh, make, catching almost everything thrown to him. Now, if you'll remember at the beginning of this game, it was pretty bad rainy conditions. The rain has pretty much stopped. However, the field is wet still, so the ball will continue to get slipperier as this drive goes on. Valley on the 37 yard line. And off we go to Hughes, and that time 
Again, that's sophomore John Humes, number 30 with the carry. Now, I was worried about that with the break there. People are really going to be cramping up. It's hard to get a team going uh, back after that. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. And, and we're back. That was number 30, John Humes down. Looks like he was cramping up. Like I was saying earlier, it's going to be really hard for both teams to keep this momentum going. It's very hard when there's a break like this in order to keep that body moving when you're in a gymnasium and you've got cleats on. That's number 15, Wes Melanson on the carry. Alec Craig is running the ball. And brings it almost to the 20 yard line. Seacrest out wide to the left. Craig's rolling out, not staying in the pocket very often this game. As compared to against Culver Academies, the Viking offensive line appears to be giving Craig a lot more time. However, with his experience against Culver, Craig keeps rolling out of the pocket in order to try to give himself a little more time. Heckman is the ball carrier. And he's taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Alex taking the ball. And that'll be a touchdown for Tipkinney Valley. That's a great way to build momentum after the lightning break. Coming down with the score. And the PAT team comes out for the second time of this season. Santiago back to kick. Santiago on to try the extra point. Kick on the way. Looks like a very good kick. And the kick is good. Two point to go in this first quarter. It is Western 23 to New Valley 14 back to 30. I'll let you ask that he scored. I got to stop him. 
Santiago is kicking. Deep kick by Santiago. That's number two, Micah Beard, on the return. Now the past two drives that Western's had, they have had one play drives scoring. Valley's hoping to stop this pattern from repeating again. That's a keeper, but there's a flag on the play. That's a backfield violation by Valley. And that's another great run by number three, Tyler Neffley. No, a touchdown for Western. However, flag on the play. Holding against Western, and that'll pull the play back. That's only Western's second penalty of the game. Great wrap up by number 12, DJ Heckman. That'll bring it down to second down and six. Great pass for Western and a great job bringing down by Valley. Number 28, Jaden Conley. He's a freshman this year. Western's been coming out very fast. That 40-second rule doesn't appear to be affecting them at all. Oh, 
And that's one of the best stops Valley's had this entire game. Western has been doing a great job on offense so far, dominating the ball. Valley's had to work hard in order to score each time, but Western, however, has seemed to be able to drive the ball with ease. And the ball was snapped before the end of the quarter, and that is the end of the first quarter. We're going to go on a quick break, and we'll be right back. And we're, and we're back. This is the second quarter. Western has the ball on the 20 yard line. Quick fake and incomplete pass. That could have been a pick by Valley. So now three receivers to the left side, one to the right. Back in the pistol formation. Quarterback Tyler Nepley. He's doing a great job this game. With quick reaction time on whether to keep the ball or pass it. That's number 12, Josh Coleman. Now let's see an improvement on Valley's goal line defense. With one stop, you got to see if they can hold him for another three. And that'll be a touchdown for Western. Western brings the PAT team out. They're shifting. They're actually going for a kick this time. They have tried successfully for two point conversions twice and once for a kick this game. And the kick is good. That brings the score up to 30 to 14. You 
pan over and get the score every so often. This is still a two-score ball game. Western leading by 16 points. And here's the kick. Good kick. Deep to number five, Alec Craig, the quarterback. Craig has great reading of the field. Often able to tell where he needs to go. I'm sorry, that was not uh, Alec Craig, but rather number six, Alec Helton. He's great at telling where he needs to go. Alec Helton is a sophomore this year. Um, able to follow his blocks very well. And oftentimes when you're coming up and on a person blocking, another person, you never know which way that defender is going to go. And you've got to try to gauge that to try not to get tackled. Craig rolling out again, and he's showing that speed that he has. First down for Valley. Man in motion. DJ Heckman, ball carrier. Down behind the line of scrimmage, brings up second down. Valley's doing a great job so far of keeping momentum up and trying to score again. Craig keeps it. Fourth and sixth. Looks like Valley's going for it. Alec rolls out. 
Interception by Western. That is number two, Micah Beard. He's a senior this year. Western takes over after Valley's turnover. That's number 21, Kitchell Gifford, on the run. Driving all the way past the 50 yard line. That'll put the ball on the 49. Again, Western is running, having a great night on the run game. Valley's playing more to stop a touchdown than to stop the run. Another player down on the field. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. And, and we're back. That was number 44, Jonathan Fields, down on the play. Valley's had, a, in the past two games, a lot of injuries, and usually it's just cramping. However, uh, Dalton Prater, senior, is out with a hand injury. Shane Ellis, senior, is out with a... Leg injury, not sure yet what's happening. He's getting an MRI next week. Great stop of the run by Valley. Again, I'm Jared Michael for RTC TV. Western's running a no-huddle offense, trying to keep Valley on their toes. And that'll be a touchdown for Western. Western shifting. And the kick is blocked. Low, low kick by Western. Could have been a bad hold, could have just been a bad read by the kicker. That's going to bring up a score of 36 to 14. With as much time left to play as what we have, you Valley definitely has a chance to get back in this and win this.
Green Bay will kick off the Western Connection and lead to the Vikings. That'll be number 28, Jaden Conley, freshman on their turn. Valley's trying to turn the momentum around here of the second quarter. Score 36 to 14. Valley really needs to get in the score on this drive. Craig rolling out. And that's a great catch by number seven, Chris Seacrest. That's his first reception of the season. Melanson, fullback number 15, sophomore. Valley is appearing to be a little bit more aggressive on the ball, something we've been needing all season. Craig rolls out and runs out of bounds. The Panthers were able to read that play very well. The fake's not doing exactly how valid I'd like them to go. The Western Panthers are coming out looking athletic, fast, and very intelligent and able to read the ball exactly where they need to go. They're down and a long seven for the Vikings at their own 38 yard line. Craig rolls to the right side. Alex Craig looking for a pass. That'll bring fourth and eight. Special teams out on the field. That'll be Duesenberry on the punt. The person who the intended receiver was on that last play. Good kick by Duesenberry. Fair catch called by number five, Nick Hackler. Last turn back in pistol formation. Pass. And that's number two, Michael Beard, on the receiving end. Panthers are a very quick team after the ball is down. Going on a no-huddle offense. The new 40-second rule doesn't appear to be affecting them at all. 
injured receiver that time was Hacker. Bring up the second out of ten. We got a 10 to snap play for 96 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Pretty good night. Yep. I didn't even count this running. Oh. Y'all hand it off this time. Coleman. Coleman, not big guy, about 5 foot 3, but he makes a nice turn. Keep his feet chopped And 11 on the play. 14 first down and that's all on the So far for Russell. Coleman takes it down to the 41 yard line. And Nepley will keep the ball, gaining a lot of ground before Valley even seems to be able to react. Brought down by number six, Isaac Randall. Great read by Melanson and rushing up in order to get that tackle. Lots of pressure put on there by Valley. On the defensive line, they're a lot more aggressive now, and it appears to be putting a little bit of pressure on Nepley. Napoli in the pistol at these back end zone 25. Hands it off. Hand off up the middle this time gets to Kitchell. Kitchell gets inside the 20 to about the 18 yard line. And Valley's been stopping on this drive very well, the running game. Under center, maybe Napoli. Going under center. After good maneuvering, number 21, Kitchell Gifford, sophomore, is able to get the first down. I guess they'll place it just outside the 10, so first and 10 from the 11. That play will keep it himself. He's to the 10, he's the 5. He'll go in for the touchdown. That's another score for Western. Special teams out on the field. No doubt about it this time. They just head out. And that's flag on the play. Off start on the offense. That'll move the ball back five yards. Give them a little bit more of a trial here on this extra point. And the kick is still good. Score is now 43-14 Western. Valley's really going to have to turn it around on this drive. The, the past few drives, Valley hasn't been able to convert the points that they need to be converting. Turning over to Western, where Western is converting those, point those turnovers into points. Number 47, Andrew Freeman, set to kick off. Heckman on the receiving end for the Vikings. And there's the kick, low kick. 
Heckman bobbles the ball. Overall, the Vikings have had a great return game this game. Giving the Vikings position on about the 25 yard line. Dusenberry out to the left. Alec Craig in the pistol. Alec back to pass. Being pressed. Craig rolls back. Now he'll look. He'll look. Now he'll throw it back across the middle looking for Webster. Toss to number 40. Caught by Bryce Webster. And it's plays like that that will really make a team uh, turn around. Tr Craig was in trouble. Lots of pressure in the backfield. Rolls out. Toss to number 40, Bryce Webster, hoping that Bryce would be there, ready to catch the ball. Tipped by Western, Bryce still gets the ball and is able to convert to first down. That'll be number 28, Jaden Conley, as the ball carrier. Set in motion before the play in order to gain a little bit of speed there. Craig hands it off again. And that's a first down. Jaden's had a great running game in this game. Western has a lot of school spirit this game. Great crowd turnout for being a rainy game. You know, after the rain delays, though, it's it's actually a great night here. Beautiful night for football. Man in motion. Ball is loose, though. And I think Western has recovered. Fumble on the play, Valley recovers. And boy, is that lucky for Valley. A turnover here would have been very bad with only two minutes, 20 seconds left to play in the second, in the first half, second quarter. You really got to wonder what Val is trying to do here. Quick timeout. We'll be right back in a short minute. It's raining. 
And and we're back. 2.14 left to play in the first half. And there comes that rain that we've become so familiar with tonight. You know, a lot of that factored into that fumble that just happened. Craig back to pass. Great rollout. Great block by number 72, Michael Pasica. And he's down on the play. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. And we're back real quick to do a quick update. Player got a major hit by number 72, Michael Pasica. Uh, after the hit, they brought the ambulance out in order to be able to check on him. They're going to check him out. Uh, concussion procedures first. And we're going to take a quick break. Uh, just giving you an update here, and we'll be right back. Six. And we're back. Valley just went over to Western's huddle, giving a quick prayer in order to make sure the player is okay, trying to touch base, keep spirits high. Both teams are both waiting for the results. <laughs> Again, a big hit. Put this player in this position. Nothing illegal. Just a large hit, sending both teams over to the sidelines. An entire Western sideline gathering up for a prayer for their player. Battling, huddling up, doing the same thing. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Second down 
And we're back. This is Valley at Western. You know, this game has been delayed with lightning delays. We're getting ready for the second half, third quarter. Both teams are preparing for to go. This is the second time that they've had a long break. The first one was over an hour and five minutes due to lightning. Rainy conditions on the field, but a good night overall. Nice and warm. Hopefully both teams can still be fired up. We've had had trouble with injuries and even had to have the ambulance out on the field once this game. Hopefully we can put that behind us and get out to some good football. Quick, clean, and fine. Because of the lightning delays, it is now 10-22, so both teams are going to be very fatigued and tired. So I'm really interested in seeing how this goes. Hopefully both teams can keep their fundamentals together. Valley has been doing a good job of making bad plays turn into good plays. And we're about ready to get this second half started as they prepare for kickoff. Valley was very close to scoring on their last drive. However, they threw a pick. And Western almost marched down for a score. Score it now at 43 to 14. Valley's going to have to be on the top of their game in order to be able to win this. Western's going to be looking to extend their lead here. Short onside kick recovered by Western. And let's see how Western's offense is going to do here after this halftime. Valley's defense was starting to get a little more aggressive towards the end of the half. Let's see if they can keep that up here. Valley was having a hard time at the beginning of the first half of stopping Western's run game. However, now it appears that they're doing a lot better job to do that. They were starting to tone that down for Western and really tune in on Western's run game. Western tries to run again. He's keeping it. That's number three, Tyler Nepley. Later. They're down at six now I will. for Western. Uh, I love you. Takes the shot, right He's going south. back. He's got a man out there. It's going to be incomplete. Coverage out there on the left. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Western back punting for the first time. High boot. Not quite sure what number 43 Camden Tucker was doing, but. Oh, 
Man set in motion. Here's Western's defense has come out ready to stop the run game of Valley. The constant on and off rain hasn't appeared to affect the passing game of Valley here too badly. I wonder if they're going to start switching over to that. Second and 16 now. And Fields joins Craig in the backfield. Craig, back to pass. Now scrambles. Now looks. He's got his man there, Bryce Webster. Great pass to number 40, Bryce Webster. Bryce and Alec have had a good mentality this entire game. Alex has been throwing to him when he's really been in need, and Bryce just keeps picking up that ball and driving forward. It's great to see Valley using a tight end as much as what they have been. Craig drives forward and gets the first down. Valley has had a great do job of converting first downs. However, they can't convert these first downs into touchdowns. They're getting down from the field, marching down the field, and having that ball taken away from them through two different styles of turnovers. Vikings staying positive as they're trying to drive this ball down the field. Quick play to Fields. Fields has got a nice quickness developed through track. He's a 100 meter sprinter. That helps him out in football with really getting his legs moving and getting going quickly. Short gain by Valley. Craig back in the pistol formation. Craig keeps it. Taken down out of bounds. So a gain of 
one on the play, bring up the second on the end. 6.40 to go. Bowser's going to take a timeout. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. And, and we're back. Valley has the ball. Western crowding close. That'll be Jonathan Fields, number 44 on the carry. Fourth and two here. Valley's going to be going for it. They really need to score on this drive. Miller awaits the snap. Going in motion is Conley. And off again goes the field. Not the middle. Field gets the handoff again, but it's stopped. That will be a turnover on downs. Western will get the ball. Tyler Neffley is the quarterback. He's back in the pistol formation. He's had a great game so far, being able to rush and pass. He's had great field sense, being able to tell where the ball needs to go, what he needs to be doing, and being able to listen and a great connectivity with the team. So far, he's been the quarterback that Western wants and has needed 43 points, showing that he's doing the job that's required. Fish time out on the field. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. And we're back. That was number 66, Brant Norris down. Clutching at his shoulder. Hopefully that's nothing too big here. Valley's been plagued by injuries. And play resumes. Quick pass number 14. Pass is incomplete. Lucky for Valley, that was an underthrown pass. Number 14. 14, Mason Shepard was uncovered. Nephly keeps it. Both quarterbacks are doing a great job at scrambling this game. And the officials are measuring the ball. And that's a first down by about the length of the football. First down and ten for Western. That'll be a first and ten for Western.
Nepley back to pass. Looking, looking, throwing it. Nepley tosses deep. That'll be a reception by number two, Micah Beard. Nephilim and Beard have had a great connection this entire game. Seeming to Nephilim seems to be able to toss it right where Beard needs it. Another score for Western. Forty-nine. Western for the PAT. They're going for a two-point conversion, and the two-point conversion is good. That'll bring the score to 51 to 14. With four minutes, 55 seconds left in the quarter, Valley's really got to wonder what they're going to do in order to help bring back a little morale to the sideline. Western fan are really getting involved. Being such a late night, normally you'd expect them to be a little tired, but they are getting more involved because of it. Western set to kick off. Squib kick. That's number 43, Camden Tucker on the reception. Valley, they trail at 51 to 14. And now fumble on the play. Western recovers. Valley has had a very bad time this game with turnovers. Simple. Misreads and miscommunications will oftentimes lead to turnovers like that. Valley's defense looking to make up for the offensive mistake right there. Great catch by number 81, Connor Lynn. He's a freshman. Made a jumping catch while covered by two. Nephli is quarterback that put it right where it was needed to go. Drive by Lister and hopefully Valley's goal line can stop them. And that'll be a touchdown for Western. Now make the count 57 to 14 in favor of the Panthers. Valley's defense just doesn't appear to have the fire that they had at the beginning of this quarter. I'm Jared Michael, commentating for RTC TV.
Freeman. Freeman. High snap. Napoli able to bring it down. Freeman gets the kick away. And the kick is good. That'll bring it to 58 14. Western over Valley. At about this time, Western's really starting to bring in their freshmen and sophomores who aren't used to getting play time in order to get them a little bit of experience for later years. Western back for the kickoff again. Very low kick again by Western. Good return by Valley, giving them. Very good posi field position. Viking offense not getting much of a break after Western drives down very quickly to score. Ought to be a catch by Jared Dewsbury, number 13, senior. Go-to receiver last week for Alec Craig. Great maneuvering by number 28, Jaden Conley. He's only a freshman at 5'7", 144. He's a pretty small uh, player out on the field, but he's been doing a great job. Looking quick, not tired at all. Hopefully he can turn this momentum around. Bobbled snap by Craig. That's number 35, Noah Miller, sophomore at the quarterback, not number five, Alec Craig. Noah tosses out quickly. Lots of pressure. Our offensive line appears to be tired, allowing defense in quickly. You can tell as a sophomore, not starting as quarterback or having a whole lot of experience as quarterback, Noah's a little flighty and not sh quite sure what to do yet and where to scramble. But he's getting experience now in order to hopefully help us out later in the season. Good run by freshman Jaden Conley. Good 
Wichita softball, what he wants done on this punt. We're down to a minute 28 to go here in the third with Western in front of the back Back deep for Western. Dusenberry back for the punt. I snap, Dusenberry hauls it in, gets the kick away at very high. Great punt by Dusenberry. And that'll be a fumble by Western. Valley recovers with great field position. Valley needed something just like that in order to put them back into the game here. Hopefully we can keep this as a miracle and use it to our advantage. Culver had the same problem returning some of Jared Duesenberry's punts last game. Fumbling two of Duesenberry's punts. And we'll see what the Vikings can do here with that great field position again. They put up two touchdowns, but that was back in the first quarter. One before the lightning delay, one after. Noah Miller has Conley go in motion. Miller will keep it himself. Miller giving up the space. Miller. Miller running backwards more than sideways. Brings it to second and 19. Loss of eight, second down and 18 for the Vikings. Down to 35 seconds to go in this third quarter. Secrets to the right, Conley. Randall to the left side. Jonathan Fields will join Miller in the backfield. Miller awaits the snap. And off to Conley, the flag on the play. Flag on the play. Western declines the penalty. And that'll be the third quarter. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. And we're back. This will bring it up to the fourth quarter for the Vikings versus Western at Western. Score is 58 to 14. Noah Miller back in the pistol. Got the snap, drops back for the pass. Throws it deep to Duesenberry, but it is knocked down. by number 10, Mike Duke. He's a senior this year. Well, we hope that, uh, we hope that he has, because he doesn't look like he, he's going back to action. He's not even standing up. No, Miller tossing quickly. Intercepted by number 45, Andy Ashburn. That'll be a turnover by the Vikings. Western brings in their second string. Trying to keep their players fresh for later in the year. The carry was by Hunter Cunningham, number 33. He's a freshman. 
The quarterback is number four, Avery Haynes, also a freshman. Confusion on the play. You can understand that. This is most of these players' first time playing in a varsity game. Valley appears tired on the ball, lining up far away and just not all that aggressive. That's number 10, Mike Duke. He's a senior. Good punt. And the ball bounces out of bounds. That'll give Valley position on the 23. Valley's offense will take over. They're going to be looking for a score here. Score is 58 to 14. Valley's players look tired, coming off the sidelines very slowly. Great run by number 44, Jonathan Fields. Valley starting to bring in some subs, give their guys a break. Save them for later in the schedule. Hand off to Heckman, number 12. He starts driving up the field. Steps out of bound. Great yardage after first contact. You can tell Heckman's been saving that up in the game. A lot of new offensive linemen in there now for Valley. Latch holder in. Have split to the right side. Ethan Yates split wide to the right. Miller awaits the snap. Heckman goes in motion. Up Fumble on the play. No, Miller steps out of bounds in order to save the ball. Valley's going to take a quick timeout. We'll be back in a minute, and we'll be right back. And we're back. Score is 58 to 14. No Miller 
in the pistol formation. Flag on the play. That'll be number 17, Sam Bell, on the carry. That's an illegal motion on the Vikings. That'll be another five yard penalty. That'll be a high snap tip by number 17, Sam Bell. Fumble that Western w recovers. That'll be Valley's seventh turnover. Number four, Avery Hayes, under center, taking the snap for Western. <laughs> Flag on the play. Holding against Western. That's a 10 yard penalty. Yep, you get some new experience in and you start to learn how to walk um, properly in a varsity football game based on this experience. That's bigger and stronger. Oh, so oh, oh, it's much easier to move your arms out and grab somebody than it is to move your feet. So first down and 13 now for Western Bell back at their own 42 yard line. Again, That'll be a fumble, uh, Western. Number 67, Harry Johnston, was right on top of that ball. However, Western was able to recover. Pitch to number 33, Hunter Coddington. It's a great run by Western. That'll bring the ball all the way up to the 39. I'm sorry, the 30. Down and 10 from the 30. Inside of six minutes now to go here in the fourth, Western up 58 14. Cottingham again with the ball carry. And ball carry. Maybe a yard. Hunter Cottington, freshman, gets the ball again. Valley slow to get up. Missed tackle by number 17, Sam Bell. Allows Western to get another first down. Panthers are still firing strong. Valley appears to be tired, but they're still going to be trying their hardest in order to keep the Western from scoring again. Great shoestring tackle by number 
11. He's not registered on the roster. Down to four and a half minutes remaining. Second down eight. And off again. No nope. pump fake. Looks out for the pass. Quick little dump pass that is bobbled around by number 31, Noah Powell now. He's also a freshman, but he keeps the ball and gains some yardage for Western. With this game starting to wrap down, Valley's going to try to stop Western from scoring here and put some more points up on the board. Coddington drives through, keeps his leg moving after making contact and able to get a couple more yards. Flag on the play. That'll be five yards because of a false start on Western. And that's number 33, Coddington, again carrying the ball. Valley's goal line has been spotty tonight. Let's see if we can get a stop here. And that'll be another touchdown for Western Panthers. Western attempts the PAT. And the kick is good. I'll bring the score up to 65 to 14. With three minutes, six seconds left in the quarter and in the game, Fowler's gonna look for another score here in order to help make it look a little bit less of a spread. Western getting ready to kick off. Valley receiving. <laughs> Number three, Cameron Parker back to receive for Valley. However, it's number 28, Jaden Conley, who picks up the ball. And that is Valley's worst return of the night. Leaving the ball on the five. Yeah. 
No, they didn't. They're starting to get their revenge. The good thing is, though, that makes Tiffany Valley stronger when they bring their best every time they play. Confusion on Valley's offensive line. No, Miller. Time out by Valley. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. And we're back. <laughs> and Valley short a guy. Quick tackle. Number 35, Noah Miller, the ball carrier. Brought down quickly by Western. Sam Bell goes in motion. Valley now on the one. And Valley barely gets the ball off it as the play clock runs down to zero. That's number 34, Jace Potter, another ninth grader on the reception. That'll be turnover on downs. 45 seconds on the game clock. Western's getting the ball in great field position. Duesenberry's back to punt. Number 80, Casey Vale, back to return. He's a sophomore. Low snap, Duesenberry kicks high. And that's going to bounce out of bounds. With 14 seconds left, Western gets great field position. Score is 65 to 14 with 14 seconds left to go on the game clock. Ball is on the 18. And it looks like Western's just going to take a knee here, ending the game. And that's the end of the game. Final score 65 14. Western over Valley. This has been Jared Michael reporting for RTC-TV.